Cape Cod is an inspiration for innovation. E-Steamers will introduce you to the often overlooked entrepreneurs building Cape Cod's future with steam. Join us on the journey as we introduce you to the makers and innovators, educators and artists creating the new economy on the sandbar. Welcome to E-Steamers. I'm your host, Paula Hersey, and today we have a special guest with us. Tom Keyes has found something that is amazing here on Cape Cod. He is with the North Atlantic Archaeology Collaborative. Pretty close. He's from Sandwich, and I'm going to let you tell the story, Tom. Welcome to E-Steamers. Thanks for having me, Paul. So you've got a, an old house that you bought recently, uh -huh. and something happened when you went to refurb. Yeah, we thought we were buying a 200-year-old house, 1817 Colonial. We did. And, well, we started doing the refurb upstairs, tore down one of the low ceilings, which the ceilings were six foot one, and I'm six foot one. Right. So we knew we had room to, to do some work. When we took the ceiling down, we found hand-cut or hand-hewn beams, and we realized they didn't do that in 1817. Something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Calling a local archaeologist, he comes in within five minutes. First thing he says to me was, uh-oh. We go up in the attic. He's looking around. I'm looking around. He goes, good thing we're sitting down, because at this point, I would bet the farm in the house is at least 1650. Wow. So we went from a house that no one lived in for 15 years. In every room, the paint was peeling in off the walls. It was a disaster. Mm. And uh, we're going to do a, a mild restoration. And it turned into a pretty significant <laughs> project if we find right. out the house is closer to 400 years old. Right. Uh, that's just uh, amazing here because there, there really literally is not anything around that's that old here left on Cape Cod that's that's intact that's just it you know they, they just don't survive right um, you know the houses you know over a period of time people have different uh, ideas of what is old and what needs to be refurbished right. you picture this house it's about 370 years old now but when it was 150 years old it was just a piece of junk right so <laughs> now we treasure it then right. it was just an old house and that's how it got saved Right. because eventually we found out the house was moved, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. And then they put these air walls, air locks, inside the house before it had gunstock posts showing. And then that was looking old. So they put in these plaster walls and they covered everything up. Basically, they entombed everything because it, they didn't want it to look like a junky old house. It looked right. like an 1817 colonial. So luckily, lucky for us, we broke through the walls and. There, there, there it all is, wallpaper and everything still sitting there. Wow. Fantastic find. Now you just said something. That area of the house wasn't necessarily always there. Yeah. It, so the story continues. The, there's a mystery here, Tom. So there is. You know, here it is. We're, we're now looking at a house that we thought was 1817. Now it's mid-17th century, 1650-ish. But in the 17th century, houses all faced due south. You know, right. uh, solar heating is nothing new. Right. Everybody needed the sun to hit the front of the house and warm it, because yeah. the back of the house was the kitchen. You would need to stay a little cooler, because you always had a fire going. Yeah. So this house now, considering that it's near the road, it's, it's now uh, not facing south. It's facing kind of east-ish, northeast, and something's wrong. Mm -hmm. So David Wheelock, who's the one that discovered it with me, he's a fantastic archaeologist, 30 right. years of archaeology. He's also an architectural archaeologist. Oh. So he understands the structures, the timber framing. And so he calls in another individual, and they did some test holes out in front of the house, and they realized something's wrong. All of the material culture around the house is 1800 to today. So that doesn't make sense. No. So he goes, the house came from somewhere else. And luckily, this was probably, I think it was... Um, beginning of March, and you can still see through the foliage, and he says, who owns that grassy knoll over by the pond? And we said, well, we do. Well, famous last words, can we put in a test hall? And they found the original site. Wow. Uh, um, that test hall is now about, the, you've seen it, it's about the size of an Olympic swimming pool. Right, well, you know, it's <laughs> funny, uh, I did have an opportunity, actually, to uh, dig on that site uh, yeah. just recently, and a uh, uh, huge thrill for myself and my husband. And there's a lot of different things that are happening in that particular site. Part of it is is that you're finding something, one thing after another, and, and you still don't know what you don't know. It's amazing. So you've 
kind of formed this collaborative so you can get the best archaeologists of the North Atlantic, basically, to, to come in and help you excavate this site to, to see what's there. So a little background, now you're on the knoll, mm -hmm. you're starting to, to dig it out. What are you finding, Tom? Oh, everything. Every piece of daily wear is going back into the 1600s as well as the 1700s because we can see there was occupation there from at some point in the 1600s. It, we know it's definitely 1650, but now we're finding older pieces, so it could be 1630s, but then it stops around 1800, so that's a great hint that shows that since this site stops at 1800 and when my house is now residing an acre further over, right. that that's where it starts. It shows that this is how the house was moved. But we find everything. We've got glassware pottery, we've got redware, uh, um, uh, eyeglasses, scissors, uh, thimbles that are completely intact and charming and uh, beautiful pottery. So this was Thomas Toby's original site and he was he was a person of means. Sure. And so he's got some of the best trade goods from the 1600s whereas a lot of the other sites would just be pretty much just locally made pottered right. junk by comparison but he's got some great stuff. We got Portuguese delft, we got German ware, Westerwald and amazing <laughs> stuff coming out of the ground. And But this is where we speak to the rarity of the site. Right. Um, here in the Northeast, we're still living on top of our first spots of colonization. Mm -hmm. uh, you go down south, there's some, a lot of failed areas. It's very uh, agricultural, and there, those houses are still there. You can dig on them. Right. Up here, it's all gone. Uh, yeah. Plymouth has been rebuilt over 20 times, Right. so there's not much left. This site, the house was picked up and moved, and what we believe happened was it was turned into a pony pasture, so it was never really plowed. And oh. so the site is intact. So it was described to me by a couple of archaeologists that this is really the only intact second quarter 17th century home site that they know of in the Northeast. And, and it didn't go down that far when we were there on no. Sunday. Um, there's, a, there's a double hearth there oh. that, that literally was maybe just, what, f a foot? under the ground? Yeah, it's amazing. Um, and, and that's another great story. I know. You know <laughs> uh, it's funny, archaeology is a matter of hit or miss. Right. So the first year doing studies, we touched on certain areas and we found all kinds of occupation and then it was for the most part done. There was another archaeologist working with us that says, well, there's not much more here or, you know, let's not continue for whatever reason and backfilled the site. Yeah, again, at that point it was just test holes and sure. lines. Um, my niece Olivia, she was in the seventh grade at the time, she says, Uncle Tom, I was talking to my science teacher and he just asked, gee, do you think we can come over and see? Because it's archaeology, it's science. Right. So he, she calls me up and says, do you think we can open one up for my class? We'll do a little field trip. I said, I love my niece Olivia. Sure. I said, of course we will. And so the archaeologists came over and they did another test unit and they went right down on top of the hearth, which they've missed for an entire year, which is understandably how that happens. Right. And now it's just expanded for the last uh, three and a half seasons we've been digging. Right. We still don't know how old the site is. Right. And you're going down only 10 centimeters at a time. Yeah. So Each level is 10 centimeters. And so you'll do a, a one meter unit. It's called a one by. Yeah. And then each level, 10 centimeters, you go down and all the artifacts that you find have to be labeled and recorded. It's not so much what we're taking out of the ground, it's where we're finding it, how right. we're finding it, what's its, what's its position, what's the material culture around it. Right. And, and that's a typical example this of This is one of the say. bags of the artifacts that I, you're finding. On the way here, I just grabbed a couple of bags that yeah. were being processed in the lab. And you'll find, you've got this here. I mean, that's, that's a piece of uh, clamshell mortar. This clam was before they, mortar. Had, before they had lime. My so they were taking clamshells, breaking them up and powderizing them and cooking them. And we know that's not a rock, that's brick. That is brick. <laughs> You'll see there's a, there's oh, a, this. That's, there's a, uh, a smoking pipe. This here, based on the whole size, it's actually rather large. This is probably maybe 1670s. This was a smoking pipe that would have been about this long, had the bowl on the end. But mm. these are a treasure because we find them everywhere because yeah. everybody smoked tobacco at that time. Yeah and they're very fragile and so they get broken they just get thrown in the ground but the bore size tells us the date within 10 years so these are a great tool awesome but with window pane glass in there there's uh, coal and um, all kinds of different pieces of redware which was um, as david willock would put it that's the the, Ma the, the 17th century version of tupperware it wasn't made <laughs> to be passed on through generations 
<laughs> but it's everywhere. Right. Now, the, the site where the hearth is, you've actually made even a more important discovery mm. a little further from that area um, that we were digging in and it's the root cellar? Why, yeah. why is that significant? I, you know, I mean, I know, but the viewers obviously don't know why a root cellar is significant as a find. And, and this speaks to the significance of this site and how important archeology span is. We've been digging for three and a half years. Right. And we thought we had a mid-century, 17th century hearth and, right. and home. We'd never found the front. Last November, we had another school group down. They were digging in what we were considering a non-sensitive area, yeah. and they came across this rock formation, and we eventually found another root cellar. Now, the interesting part about that is it's far away from that hearth, which indicates that there was another house in front of this house. So Jeez. either that was a part of, and it was right. a long addition, or that was taken down for the new house being built behind it. <laughs> but it, it's older. So if we're looking at a mid-century hearth, now we found an older house. We're running out of dates. The right. boat hit the rock in 1620. Right. <laughs> We're running out of time here. Um, but the root cellar is very significant because the last good um, uh, early 17th century root cellar was found was the Alden site up in Duxbury. And that was in the late 1950s. Right. And when they eventually got all of the rubble because they kicked in the, yep. the side walls to fill it in, there were thousands of artifacts in the bottom. So we don't know what's in the bottom yet. It's been killing me all winter. <laughs> but we are now starting to excavate just a corner section down. We would need to get yep. to the subfloor to find out if there was cobbles or wood or, or what's down there. Yep. An interesting point is we've started and we've already have, you know the, the triangular windows from the 17th century? Yep. You're looking at the diamond panes and at the top they'd be triangles because they were halves obviously. We have three quarrels which are complete, non-broken. We've never seen wow. that before, which is so rare. Yeah. So what else is down there? Because it's below the frost eaves. Yeah. It's uh, pretty exciting. <laughs> but, but so now we're looking at an earlier house after three and a half years of digging. Right. So what's interesting is a lot of archeology span is a small snippet at a time because you're putting a road in or a house or a construction. They call in an archeology span team because it's a sensitive area and they get about three months to dig. And three months didn't tell us anything. Right. So after three and a half years, we've now found something more significant. So uh, we're taking our time, and because of that, when Melissa, my wife and I, we bought our house and doing the restoration, that's on one acre. This is a separate acre and a half buildable lot. We're not gonna build on it. Right. And we like to call it Sandwich's version of Stonehenge. <laughs> so what are we gonna do with it? It's well, right on the, the pond. It's a beautiful where the locale, you were there. Comes from and um, uh, you know, the experience that we had on Sunday, you've opened up this site for public digging yeah. for a fee to help with Correct. the archaeology on site. Um, you know, with archaeology, not just public coming out with, with shovels. No, no, no. no, no. no. And, and, it's a teaching no, opportunity. It, it's a teaching opportunity. So you're doing these STEM collaborative classes. You're bringing the public in. Um, my husband was absolutely fascinated with the whole process of it. Um, but this is really something that you know, we can all get involved in. It's yeah. our heritage and history yes. here on the Cape. And you know, the, the finds that, that are happening here are so significant that, you know, we're encouraging people th with the collaborative is to contact you is, is yeah. you know, what can we do to help? We're, we're now making it so, you know, here we have the top of this knoll and it's a beautiful spot. My wife and I, we've now set it aside and, and it's in the control of the North Atlantic Archaeological Collaborative in okay. perpetuity. Okay. so that it, it can be protected because these sites just don't don't show up they're right. just not available so opening up to the public we've been doing that for the last two and a half years with our uh, school trips yep. we've had from uh, Boston and all over and and part of it we've even put curriculum together for the town of Sandwich and so they have an archaeology elective now in mm -hmm. the STEM Academy but we were missing the beat when I went to the um, the Technology Council, yep. and I asked, so anybody want to come over and dig? And all the hands went up, and I said, I think <laughs> it's time. Because people love the whole idea of discovery, right? digging, I mean, it's dirty. But it remember, is dirty, your, clothes, but your clothes can be washed, your memories can't, but, but get the, in the hole. But the things that you, know, that you find, I, I want you to do the exclusive. We only have a couple of minutes left of the show, and you found yes. what looks like a rock. 
And in Sunday, we found lots of rocks. They were pretty rocks, but they were rocks nonetheless. We like we to kid that we're sometimes a, a geologist also, because we're just exactly. looking at rocks. But you have really literally found something that is so significant, you still don't know what you don't know. Yeah, the lab hasn't looked at it, right? and so we now, uh, we've sent it down so that a couple of people that have more Paleo-Indian experience can take a look at this. But what we found is when we started excavating the cobbles in the bottom of the root cellar, right. these are just rocks that were kicked in to help fill it in. Yep. And my, David Wheelock, the lead archaeologist, as he was picking up all these rocks, this one caught his attention because he looks at them all, obviously. And it's hard to see, you know, right now from the cameras, but right. there's a star, three intersecting lines here. There's a wear pattern here, and it's very comfortable in your hand. Now, to me, it looks like it's something that you'd be using for napping, making flakes, making uh, spear points or arrow points. Uh, and if that's the case, you know, this could be 400, could be 4,000 years old. Right. But the ornamentation is so unique, which is fantastic. Yeah. This makes it a wonderful find. Uh, we've yet to find one like this. So this is a, certainly a working tool. You can see it clearly that the wear down here, yeah. just an amazing piece. And this was just found two days ago. So you're getting exclusive on a really <laughs> great piece. So right. it's not just a first purely colonial site. It is a prehistoric site because we have also um, addle addles, which date yep. somewhere around 6,000 years old, give or take a thousand. Yep. Technology didn't change. Where well, they were hunting mastodons in the backyard with spears. Can you imagine? <laughs> so we have an awful lot of flakes, arrow points. Um, right. We also have um, uh, some pottery that's Native American. Yep. So it's a significant site. And uh, the best way to put it is someone said, you know what, do you know what history your site has seen? I said, what? They go, all of it. All of it, right. Which is fantastic. And we yeah. want to share that with the public. The student yeah. participation is wonderful. We're having a great right. time with that. So but we want the public out exactly. there. Exactly. We also offer not just a public dig, where we need to have at least 13 people to make it worth the while, right. but also we want to open it up for private, whether a family wants to come out and have an experience with the yeah. archaeology team, or even if a corporate group wants to come out. Yeah. And, and Team building. Because uh, we, we need to raise funds to support the archaeology right. and to protect the site so that it continues beyond me. Someday I'm going to be an artifact. I won't right. be there to protect it with myself and, and my wife, so it needs to survive. How do they get, uh, there's a website, right? Yes. Um, the best way to get in touch with us is to go to naarchaeology.org. Yep. And on there you'll see there's a, there's a, a, a drop down called Hands-On Archaeology okay. where the public can get involved. Right. But you can also peruse the site and look at other updates that we're doing. Yeah. We now have, it's, it's a new site. We have been using Facebook for over a year. Yeah. Now the site is up, so if anything is not complete yet, yeah. if you click on it, it'll take you to the Facebook. And you'll see Thank all you. kinds of updates there on Facebook too. So naarchaeology.org, okay. uh, get involved. This is a fantastic find, and it's a lot of fun, and you've right. had the experience. I, I absolutely enjoyed it so much, and like I said, my husband, who you know wants to be an archaeologist when he grows up. <laughs> we don't have to grow up. It's right there. You don't have to grow up, and that, that was it. Um, you know, being able to be there and dig and see some of those uh, redware and some of the brick that was coming up. We found a piece of glass. Um, each discovery was, you know, goosebumps on your skin. Oh, yeah. Thinking of the history and what you were standing on and then looking at. So, um, you know, the best of luck. Uh, we're going to have you back because oh, we, want, we want updates. We want to make sure that we stay plugged into this. If you're a school, please contact Tom. This is a fantastic STEM opportunity for any of the schools out there. What a field trip for these kids to do. Yep. Um, My phone number's on there. If anybody wants to contact yep. me directly, please do if you don't want to go through the site. Yep. Or email me at tkeys at naarchaeology.org. Okay. Um, it's fun. Excellent. Uh, we're enjoying it. Great. Thanks so much, Tom. I Thanks appreciate it. Me, Paula. And uh, I'm Paula Hersey, and this is E Steamers. Mm -hmm.